The parents of that accused Michigan school shooter appeared in court facing charges in the death of the four students who were gunned down last fall. Prosecutors arguing the couple ignored warning signs that their son was dangerous. Will Reeve has the story. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Michael. While their son faces charges including murder and terrorism and is expected to plead guilty by reason of insanity, Jennifer and James Crumley face four charges of involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors using records of text messages and eyewitness testimony to try to prove that their negligence contributed to tragedy. The parents of Ethan Crumley appearing in a Michigan court Tuesday after that Oxford High School shooting that killed four students last November. Prosecutors say Jennifer and James Crumley gave their son a firearm and repeatedly ignored warning signs. Investigators showing text messages Jennifer Crumley sent the day before the shooting when Ethan got in trouble for looking up bullets on his phone during class. Jennifer texting with her 15-year-old son. Did you at least show them a pic of your new gun? And... LOL, I'm not mad. You have to learn not to get caught. The morning of the shooting, the Crumleys went to the school for a meeting with school officials. Prosecutors playing the 911 call James Crumley made just hours later. I'm at my house. There's an active shooter situation going on at the high school. Jennifer's boss, Andrew Smith, testifying that the morning of the shooting, Jennifer told him she needed to get Ethan counseling. Jennifer allegedly screaming in the office as news of the shooting broke. Later, texting Smith, the gun is gone and so are the bullets. Adding, I need a lawyer. Ethan did it. And begging, I need my job. Please don't judge me for what my son did. I was surprised she was worried about her job at the time. I thought she'd be more worried about what was going on. Attorney Ven Johnson representing three students' families saying the hearing was like nothing he'd seen before. What you heard today was overwhelmingly how deeply disturbed Ethan Crumley was for an extended period of time. He was crying for help for months. Chad Gregory's son Keegan was inside the school and saw his best friend Justin Schilling shot dead. He buries it. He knows it's a long road and there's a bit of survivor guilt. You know, he really, really feels genuinely sad as we do for the kids that didn't come home. The Crumleys have denied any wrongdoing in this case. They say they properly secured the gun in their home and that they had no way of knowing their son would use it to shoot up his school and that they bear no responsibility for the shooting. Their next court appearance is scheduled for later this month. George. Okay, well, thanks. Let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. So, Dan, right now, the prosecution's job is to convince a judge to let this go to trial. Is it a high bar? Um, typically, it's not at all. I mean, it's probable cause. Typically, you view this as almost a rubber stamp uh, that the case is going to move forward. But this is a pretty unique legal theory here, holding the parents responsible for the actions of their child, involuntary manslaughter. So there is a real legal fight to be had, but I think based on the facts and based on the pressure that'll be on this judge, I'd expect that he likely would allow the case to move forward. What's the parent's best argument to prevent it? Well, I think it's that what you just heard Will talk about is the fact that the dad is basically saying, look, the minute I noticed my gun was gone, I'm calling 911 that this wasn't foreseeable. That's one of the, the critical legal arguments. There needs to be a level of foreseeability, not foreseeability that their kid could be in trouble, not foreseeability that their kid uh, m might do something silly, but really foreseeability of the responsibility of taking a life. Remember, when you're talking about involuntary manslaughter, you're saying that these parents are responsible for the deaths that were involved here. How damaging are the text messages? Very. I think if you were going to say to me, what's the most important testimony uh, or evidence for the prosecution here? It's the text messages. It's not what the parents did after the fact, right? It's not the fact that the mother's talking about uh, wanting to keep her job, et cetera. It's what they didn't do beforehand. It's the fact that uh, she uh, knows that her t son is talking about the bullets and saying, don't get caught. There's this heartbreaking uh, text message where Ethan is texting that he thinks his house is haunted and he's seeing things in the house and the mom doesn't respond. And he says, you're not even going to respond to my texts. And so it's things like that, that if this case moves forward to trial, 
I think will be very difficult for the parents emotionally, putting aside the legal aspects of this, for the jury to hear that, I think is going to be problematic for the parents. Any chance the case is split, the mom goes to trial but not the dad? It's possible, yeah. I mean, th remember, these are two separate defendants, and there is a lot more evidence against the mom than against the dad. And there could be an argument from the dad's lawyer that basically says, look, you know, <laughs> that's her. You got to focus on the evidence against me. And the judge could decide, yeah, there's enough against one, not against the other. Unlikely, but possible. Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.